Welcome to the next Critique the Community. Today we are going to be critiquing images of groups of people, three or more. Yep. If you'd like to be a part of the next critique, you can head over to fstoppers.com slash contest at any time. The next critique is going to be images of technology, whatever you think that uh, is. Uh, upload your technological images now. And uh, before we get started with the critique, I want to mention that this video is sponsored by Luminar. Luminar is standalone photography editing software, but it's really unlike any other software that I've used before. Really heavily reliant on AI and like the computer software figuring out what picture it's editing and then making specific changes based on the picture rather than just global changes that would be the same right, in any image. Right. They also have modules where you can just slide single sliders and have really quick results. Whereas I know you and I grew up with Photoshop. I mean, you really have to learn how to do so many of the features and add layers and make masks. Like it can be very complicated to learn Photoshop. Absolutely. Luminar has to be one of the easiest pieces of software just to start using instantly. Yeah, and I do want to be clear. I, I would never say that Luminar is a replacement for Photoshop, but I actually like using it kind of in tandem or either or. There's certain images that I just want to do a really quick edit to, and there's certain things that I know how to do in Photoshop, but might take a long time. I mean, the biggest one for me is the sky replacement thing. I know how to replace the sky in Photoshop, but when you start getting really complex skies with leaves, blurry leaves and stuff, and you yep. gotta go in and cut those out, it can be incredibly tedious. Somehow Luminar has created software that basically just does one click and it, it does a great job. Um, this software is also shockingly affordable. I think it's 80 bucks. And if you go to the link right now, you can check it out. You don't have to buy it. You can, you can do the, uh, the free trial. And then if you do decide to buy it, use the code FSTOPPERS. You can save an additional 10 bucks. I think it's gonna blow your mind. I mean, I'm a big Photoshop user. Yeah. I always kind of feel like, I don't need any other software. I know how to use the best software, Photoshop, but this is different. Well, it's also nice when you're trying to, in these times, figure out where all your money is going every month. Yeah. You can cut the subscription in many cases. I like to own stuff, you know? It is yeah. nice to buy something once and own it, and you can use it however you want. So they have that option as well. Let's get into this critique. Now, I've curated all of these images. This is the highest rated image within the groups. And before we jump into this, why don't we pick a number between 2 and 20, and that will be the second random winner of a tutorial. 20. Number 20, so the final one. First and last, you both win a tutorial. You can head over to fstoppers.com slash store to pick that out. How are they getting this? They're messaging you. Send me a private message on fstoppers, um, and just let me know which tutorial you want if you're the winner, like this guy right here and uh, I will make sure it gets to you. Are you ready to rate it? I am ready to rate it. Three, two, one. Are you going th three? Yeah, there's aspects of this that I, I love, but maybe the fact that it's, you know, it kind of seems like a bit of a mess, you know, it's not very symmetrical. Uh, that's why I personally didn't go four. I don't know if I have some kind of bias because I know this is the highest rated image and I picked these out today and I think this is maybe my favorite image. Spoiler alert. Really? Um, I don't know that I like what's going on on the top. There's some weird branches that maybe that's like a part of the, the dress that's, I don't know, I would clean up the top left. The top right also has some weird scratches. I see what you're saying about the symmetry. Maybe I would just crop in a little tighter to get rid of, on my iPad I have a lot of black space because I think this is a super wide angle crop, wide aspect ratio. But I love the colors in this. I love the cyans and the blues and the yellow. There's enough going on that I find my eye wandering through the frame and looking at this longer than I look at most images. And I think it's beautiful. I don't think it's too over the top with too much blur. I really like this image. I see what you're saying though, compositionally, maybe it could be a little tighter. Uh, it's like I want more uh, chaos or more uniformity. I feel like the right side of this image is much more interesting than the left side. And if I zoom in and kind of make it a square, a square crop on the right, I think that's a more powerful composition. So on the left side, you don't have any faces towards the camera, and you also have very few white in this kind of yellow color. 
you just said you like the right side better, but do you feel like, we always talk about leading lines. Do you feel like there's like a leading color and brightness that pulls your eye to the bottom right side that you like, or do you think it would be better if it was all kind of mixed in and out? Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I like those yellow dresses. I feel like they've, they kind of. I like it. I feel like that. Those three girls on the right side anchor this image down to me. Well, I keep looking at it just as a square image from the right. You've given up on the left side. <laughs> yeah, I've given up on the left. I mean, I, I really like this image, um, but I just. It's not blowing my mind. Community gives it 3.35. Next. Have you ever had to take an image like this where you pose a bunch of people and light them in one way and composite them all together? Maybe I've, I've played with this a little bit at a wedding or two, but usually at weddings there's just not enough time to really work on something like this. So I might take a picture of a group of people posed kind of cool like this, but I'm not individually lighting them one by one and compositing it. it. Seems like a technique that would be pretty hard to practice on because you would have to get a lot of people in a scene. I mean, I guess you could do it with like one person and just constantly move them around, but um, I've never had to really do this, but I'm super interested in this kind of work. Yeah, are you ready to rate it? I think so. Three, two, one. I'm in between a three and a four on this. I, I, I might like this better than the last shot, I don't know. Um, I think my biggest critique with this image is just that some of the people are looking at the camera and many are not. And it just feels like a mistake, especially this woman in the purple in the very back. I mean, she looks like she's completely zoned out. Like Purple or blue? Uh, this girl right in the middle. Oh, her. I was going to go go to the far left blue. She, she's the, like looking past the camera too. Well, a lot of people are looking past the camera, but this lady in the middle specifically looks like not there yeah, the at headlights. all. I don't like the gap between the purple and then the brightest girl. I want them just to be nudged over. I want the girl in the, blue, the light blue dress, mm -hmm. who I think might, she looks really good the way she's sitting. Yeah. I want her shoulder to cut into the poofy arms of the purple girl. Yeah. So that if, I just feel like these are two images down the middle. But I love the posing. I love the lighting. A lot of the ladies in this look really, really good. I love the post-processing. It's just that we have some people zoning out, which is kind of weird. It's also interesting how well all of these different colors kind of blend into this frame. Like, I keep wanting to think that the yellow dresses look so out of place, but the way they've arranged this to where it kind of has this like rainbow pattern, I think, it, I think it's nice. I think the way they did that's really well. I just wish that the faces were expressions yeah. were better. But I have to say, that's probably the hardest thing to do. Could you imagine ever producing this image and feeling like the majority of people were happy with the way they personally looked in the image? Yeah, I mean, that would be difficult, but I think if somebody said, but I'm not even looking at the camera, I think that would be a legitimate criticism. Community gives it 3.25. Next up. Ready? Mm, yeah. Three, two, one. I'm between a two and a three, but... So am I. Maybe that's a little rough. Um, I just feel like when I really step back and think of the majority of photographers' portfolios that I see, I would say this probably belongs in your portfolio. I think there's a little too much depth of field, foreground blurriness going on for my liking. And I can't figure out the expression of the main girl in the middle. It's like kind of disgust, but that's kind of what these that's fashion, what fashion images about, kind of man. do. Too cool for school. Um, yeah, I I, uh, I feel like the composition's okay. The girls look okay. I don't mind shooting through a foreground element, but there's so much of these weeds right in this girl's face that it just feels like a mistake to me. If you zoom in and crop a lot of the bottom part of it out. Do you like it any more or less, or do you like the vertical crop? 
I am not a huge fan of the vertical crop on this because you're cutting into the girl's shoulders on the right and left. So and the if, hands and like there's a lot yeah. of areas that are being cropped in a weird so way. So if you if you zoom in a lot and make this a uh, horizontal image, then the crop on the shoulders and the hands makes a little bit more sense. But yeah, it just it feels a little uneasy the way it's currently uh, composed. Community 2.95. Have you ever had to create one of these images? No, but we have a friend in Charleston who was doing this stuff, making like billboards and stuff for the College of Charleston, and she was doing a really good job. Yeah, she got her stuff put on like all the buses. Okay. So CARTA, public transit, it'd be fun to, it's always nice seeing friends of yours work published in a big way like that. Yeah. The problem that I'm seeing with this is it appears that all of these images were taken from a live game and cut out and although I feel like the uh, the composition has been uh, it, it looks it looks pretty good the lighting and the color on these guys doesn't look very good ready to rate this yeah I guess three two one in between a two and a three, I'm trying to decide which one I like better. I guess maybe I like this one better than the last shot. Here, here's how I would approach this image. I think what you're saying is right. These images were taken at a taken at a live event. I would probably build this, and now I would probably shop this to the same team, and say this is a concept that I have that I've already kind of created, and I want to go in with each player, and I want to have the jerseys much more. Uh, polished like you almost have three different jerseys going on here maybe four there's the black there's the white there's the gray there's the orange it just feels a little like too many colors too yeah. many teams i can't tell if it's one team i can't read the logo in the background but i would try to now persuade the the basketball organization the team to allow me to come in with strobes and light this in a much more stylized way and maybe reduce it down to like the top five or eight players like the stars and really try to have control over it and then produce this again and put that image in my portfolio. This just feels too jumbled. I can't tell what the team is. I can't read the logo. There's a lot of people in here that I feel like were just included because they were part of the team, but they're not in a good position. Number 22 on the left over there. <laughs> Where's like, 22? It's like a dad who just snuck in i don't know he just like oh he's like the coach he's like the <laughs> everybody looks really athletic well number then... seven right next to him also looks like a dad yeah i don't know what's going on here uh but i i, I like the concept i feel like there's a lot of potential here community gives it 2.47 are you ready? I think so. Three, two, one. Three stars. We agree. I'm going to be a little harsh on this, uh, even though I'm giving it three stars. I feel like this is certainly good enough to be making money as a family portrait photographer. However, I feel like this could be so much better. One, very first thing, get lower on the ground. Get down on their level so that you're not seeing the weird, ugly... Dirt. white dirt and you're you're lowering that background i mean the prettiest part of this shot are the trees not the ground but yet the ground is taking up two-thirds of this entire frame get low shoot more up at an angle and you're going to get those beautiful colors push them back a little bit further so that they're standing on leaves and not on dirt and then my other issue is the pose here i mean <laughs> Everyone's copying each other? I mean, I kind of think it works. I don't know. It just it feels very fake and posy and cheesy to me. It doesn't feel like a genuine shot um, that this is, this is how you want to remember your kids at this age with their arms crossed looking cool. I remember when I was young, my mom took me and my brother to a uh, portrait studio, you know, like one of these mall portrait studios where they like... Like JCPenney's? It was close to that, but it was, it was a, just a kiosk in the middle of the mall. No, it was, it was it had its own store, 
but you know they had the things that they'd pull down and it would be like this you'd have like the okay the background with the leaves and then the next one would be like the barn and, and the then the roman one. statues <laughs> <You> <laughs> probably know, the pillars and uh you know they had like their go-to 20 poses for us to do standing in front of these scenes yeah and we did one where we got to go back to back arms crossed like looking cool kind of yeah. like this and so the way this business worked, you know, years ago, this was probably back in the early 90s. Um, you maybe it was to in pick the 80s. like one or something? Or? Yeah, so you, you, maybe the portrait session was free or very affordable, but then you, you got to pay for each individual picture or print or something. Obviously, nothing was digital back then. So my mom asked, which image do you boys like? And we wanted that one. We yeah. were like, that's the only one we like. Because all the other ones, like, head cocked, smiling with the... Yeah, you know, barn behind us, and we were like, we like that one. We look cool. And my mom was like, I'm not paying for that one. Like, what is that even a picture of? You you look like biker gang little kids or something. That's not what. It's I a very Disney pose though. Like if you had like two kids on a movie poster, that's probably how they would be. If they were superheroes or something. Okay. So I I, I don't know. I feel like this is a shot that should be taken, especially if the kids are excited about it. Like do what the kids want. Get them in a good mood and everything. But I find that the best pictures of kids are the ones in between the poses. The ones that after this shot, you make a joke and they start cracking up. Or you tell them to put their arms around each other and one of the kid trips and then they all start laughing or something. Those are the shots that I'm really going for. This, this just feels like super posy to me. I agree with everything you said. Lowering the, I don't know that you have to lower the camera super low you would if you didn't move them that would get rid of the ground i mean it'd still be there but it'd be so thin yeah but if you got just a few feet lower you would probably want to push them onto the the leaves so that you got rid of it do you feel like there's some kind of weird like a uh, skin glow effect that's on this or am i well i'm trying to figure out the the white balance situation i feel like it's super close but especially this tall kid he's got this that's the dad right or is that the kid what <laughs> I just assumed that was the dad, and he's, he's like... He's either 13 or 50. Really? I was going to say he... <laughs> I was going to say he's like 25. Wait, yeah, that would make the older kid... I, either way. I don't know. Um, I feel like he especially has this little green tint, cool tint to him that's not really matching the background, but the other kids look better to me. So I don't know what's going on there. But yeah, I looking at his shoes and jeans, he's definitely the older brother. They've got a, uh, I would imagine, a softbox off camera right. Yeah. Community gives it 2.84. You've definitely shot some stuff like this. I've seen you in your garage studio with the ladder and... Don't think I've taken any ladder shots. No, that's like the most cliche. I've always wanted to make a video for F-Stoppers that was like, how to do five cliche photo shoots. You know, one would be on the train tracks, which means you actually have to go do it. And yeah. then everyone would be outraged. But then the other would be the ladder shoot. And just some of these things that, you know, we've talked about the Apple boxes. I don't know that the ladder is that. Maybe the ladder was really big back in the 90s. But oh, I, the ladder is huge. It. I mean, if I, we have these gravity backdrops everywhere, yeah. we love them. But all of their ad campaigns, oh, every marketing ladder. has the painted ladder. And you look <laughs> at a lot of people, like, I mean, we love Clay Cook. We did a tutorial yeah. with them. Got the ladder. You okay. look at Annie Leibovitz, the ladder. You get, I mean, there's so many people. Chris Knight, the ladder. Everyone's got the ladder. Okay. Maybe I'm, I'm out of the loop. All right, are you ready to rate this? Yes. Three, two, one. Two stars. We agree. Um, I feel like there's a lot of potential here, but um, I do not love this lighting. And I'm trying to figure out what they have going on with the lighting here. Is it just like a huge softbox really far away that's just making it almost look like a big window light? Yeah, it kind of feels like this is in a uh, garage or something and the garage door is just open. Um, but I feel like the girl, the girl on the left, um, Gosh, with the, the girl curly on the left hair, is, I feel like she looks pretty good. She's beautiful. And then the, the girl on the ladder. Yeah. The girl on the ladder, potential. the lighting looks good on her as well, but everyone else, the lighting looks so flat and boring. 
it's hard for me to kind of pinpoint what's going on. And when you look at the shadows being cast, you know, by their feet on the ground, it's, there's like no shadows. Look, look at the girl's left foot on the very left bottom of the frame. It's like no shadow is being cast. It's very strange. Do you think the light is just so far away and so big that it's causing really soft and not dense lights? I mean, the further the light, further you pull the light away, the less dense shadows should be in theory if it's large. I don't know. It, it kind of just makes me feel like this is natural light. So we're seeing, uh, this is group shots. We're seeing a lot of stuff like this. I don't know where to look for inspiration, but I know like there's a lot of shows. Kristen's like addicted to Bravo, and they have all these like real housewives. And there's some show we were watching last night called uh, what is it? It's on HBO. Gosh, what is that called? You could look at how they do their marketing, and I'm sure it's group shots of people, and maybe it's more composited than it would be everyone sitting there. You know, everyone's lit perfectly. But um, well, even the show in uh, Charleston, the Southern Charm. Southern Charm, yeah. Like, I saw them when I was in New York. They had all their pictures of all the cast were like... I think going through all these uh, images like this, looking at what other advertising agencies are doing for shows would probably be a good way to see how they pose groups of people, how they light them. Community 2.55. I'm going to think of the name of it. It's like right there. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but no I want people cares. to know what I'm talking about, so if they want to look it up. Ready? Yep. Two, one. Ah, uh, I meant to throw three. Three stars. We agree. I mean, there's nothing exciting about this, but I feel like it is good enough to potentially put on a website and, and book some jobs with it. I, you know, I don't like the kid on the left, their expression very much. I feel like the other two kids' expression is better, happier. Um, lighting looks great. But uh, don't love it, don't hate it. I just, I love when it's people and it's kids and everyone's got a good expression and they look attractive like this. I feel like I would probably just crop in a little tighter, make it more about them. Do you feel like all, there's just a little bit of space on the sides that I don't think is needed. I feel like if you crop in, even the girl on the left cut off her head just slightly. It just makes it that much more in your face. And if you're just going through a family photographer's website, I feel like that has a little bit more impact. Is that a girl on the left? I think these are all girls. Dun, dun, dun. Not going down that rabbit hole. We've been yelled at too many times before for misgendering Do you think people. the one in the middle is a girl? Not, not going there, Patrick. Not going there. Insecure. That's the name of the show. Have you ever gone to a uh, Civil War reenactment? Let me guess, you probably were in one. You were like, my brother and I went and we, we carried the cart with the medical supplies. No. They didn't it's do that funny. down I, in Jacksonville? I feel like I've seen so many of the reenactments on the internet and like maybe friends of mine have been in them and stuff that maybe it feels like I've been to one before, <laughs> but I don't I think, think you I, would know. I've ever been to it. I mean, it seems like the weirdest tradition for all of our foreign fans. Do you guys reenact war scenes? Is well, it once a year that people do that this? That might be what this is. Well, this is something. Yeah, I mean, similar I'll, in that vein. Not really. Are they are, are there like hundreds or thousands of grown men pretending to do this and like pretending to be shot and going ah, and falling know. on the ground while other people watch? What a weird thing to do. I went to, when I moved to Nashville, I lived in Nashville for a few years. They had a big one just outside of Nashville. And then, isn't there a really popular movie um, where one of the characters makes his, like, dad, it's like his stepdad or somebody go to this reenactment and they try to bond over it? I don't know. What's Rudd? What's that guy's name? Actor or something. Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. Rudd, I think he has a movie like that. It's, it's strange, I think, but... It like combines war with collectibles with having a purpose in life and puts all of them together and says, hey, have, have fun. We just lost like three subscribers for that comment. 
All right, you ready to rate this? Is anything being said that's important? Uh, three, two, one. So I'm in between a two and a three. What's your problem? I feel like the guy in the front looks kind of cool. Everybody else, like the two guys on the left almost looked identical. And it feels like everyone, th these two guys are looking at the camera. The depth of field is so deep that, and it's black and white. I just, I'm losing when I just like quickly look at this. Just close your eyes and look at it. It doesn't have the impact. Close that, your eyes and look at it. Eh, look, you never do that? Squint your eyes and look at it. Squint. I mean, if I squint, it almost looks better. It's like it, it, my eyes go straight to him. But when I see everything really bright. So you're saying close your eyes and then look at it really quickly? Close your eyes and then look at it for a second. And what is your first impression? There's too many details that I can't read it very quickly. And making it black and white is... A lot of times in Photoshop. I look at the little navigator up in the corner and I just look at the preview or if you're in Lightroom, I just look at the th smallest thumbnail yep. and I like to know, can I read that quickly and know what that is to where I want to click on it? Okay. I think we had an image of a, of a liquor bottle in the last critique and you were like, this is the worst picture ever. And I was like, but small, it, look, it makes me want to click on it. I think there's a value there and I think the black and white, the depth of field, the, the simple toning, like. There's no vignette. There's nothing to like pull me to the guy in the middle who I think looks the best, where everybody else just kind of. So my critique is 100% the opposite. Yeah. I feel like the guy in the front looks the worst, and his expression is completely out to lunch and uh, zoning out. He does not look like he's going into battle or he's about to be shot at or he's about to shoot someone. It looks like he's posing for a photograph. Everyone else looks legitimate. I think I would, if I were taking this shot, I would lower the camera, kind of similarly to well, what I suggested with the kids. Bring his head higher in the frame so it's e more even with the other guys. And then get him to really be looking at something and, and look like he's about to do something rather than just this blank stare he has. We are always called, often called the crop masters. Mm -hmm. If you just crop in and make it more about him and, and maybe in your case fix his expression. I like that. But cut off all the people to where they're yeah, there like but they're not main characters. I think that helps this image a lot. Community 3.25. Dude, I'm telling you, this critique, this was one of the worst, I feel like. And there was so many bad images of groups that I did not think belonged in your portfolio. So just for humor, I decided to do a little bridge run or whatever this is. You know that marathon. statistic that everyone loves to spout that, like, the, the best long-distance runner in the animal kingdom is the human? Like, humans are capable of running longer than any other... Okay animal on the planet. Um, but the truth is... We're is the that, only ones dumb enough to continue. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I guarantee you a cheetah or a deer could run longer if they like put their mind to it and they were like, I'm going to practice this and I'm going to just run all day. But they choose to not do that. They just <laughs> run when they need to. They haven't discovered the beer at the end of the... The run. I guess. All right, this should be pretty easy. Three, two, one. I'm in between a one and a two. It's a one or a two, but like by definition, it seems like this was shot with a telephoto lens where they were anticipating it and some effort, some photographic effort right. went into it. You're right, it's a two. But um, I don't know. I mean, is this good enough for like the AP, for the news? Like, would this get sure. published for that? Maybe. Would this belong anywhere in your portfolio if that was your full time job? Surely no. you would have better photojournalistic images. Yeah. And this guy on the right who looks like me, I don't like him in the shot. Um, my eye keeps going to him, keeps going to him, keeps going to him, and I feel like he's not adding anything to the shot. So I The hard thing with a shot like this um, is if you focus where they focused here, you almost want like the best looking people or the most athletic people, yeah. maybe the people at the front of the race. People at the front of the race probably aren't going to have that crowd behind them because they're winning the race. 
So I don't know if you sit here all day and try to get the best people because that's who your eye is going to go to. Or if you shoot even more telephoto and maybe zoom into the larger crowd where you can get the foreground and the background really blurred. Yeah. But you kind of, you know, you always see those shots on uh, late night news where it's like everyone's blurred, but like they focused really like mm -hmm. this thin little area. It still represents the idea, but. Um, Community 2.38. Ready? Three, two, one. I guess three, three stars. What were you go thinking of doing? Two or three? Two? Somewhere in there. I don't know. This is a hard shot because I feel like if you're a small little business and you need a picture for your website, I think this is like good enough. Yeah. I think it's not offensive. I think all these guys look very personable. I would like to hang out or do business with them. I'm not sure what their business is. Maybe they deliver milk for a living and they just got done with their milk run. Mm -hmm. But I like the clean vibe of it. I like the tonality. Maybe the two guys in white, maybe like there's a way to get a cooler shirt for them. But overall, and I do like the, the two black, two white. It, there, there's elements of that that I do like. I don't find this image offensive or anything. And I thought if I saw this in many portfolios in Charleston for photographers I know I would be like oh nothing crazy but it's a shot that I think you need uh, in your portfolio if you shoot this kind of stuff yeah it's kind of kind of jolting having the blown out white shirts and then like the guy in the back with the black shirt there's no data at all maybe if you could switch these guys since we have the light on camera left uh, switch them so that the guy with the black shirt is being hit more directly with light in his chest. I'm not sure. But I also see why, you know, maybe he's the tallest, so they put him in the back, which makes sense. I like that aspect of the posing. Um, guy in the front, don't love his pose with his feet like that, man spreading, but it's okay. Would you prefer him just to be barefoot? Yeah. Just like barbaric feet hanging out. Yeah. You would say that. Um, I feel like it's okay. And then maybe, you know, maybe if there was just a more interesting background overall, it could not that seamless. Maybe that could really spice it up. I don't know. I don't, I don't mind this image. Community 2.71. That's the first wedding photo we've seen. They're not on a train track, so we don't have to go down that path. Man, I drank a decaf coffee right before coming here. Yeah. And you know me, I feel like something hits me with coffee or caffeine. I don't know what it is. I'm a lightweight now. And I just feel horrible. I, I feel tired and dizzy. With and decaf? Yes. What is wrong with me? Yeah, I don't know. That'd be interesting to look into because you did not. Is it like a placebo effect? Like you, you think you've had coffee, but you didn't have the caffeine. Or is there as decaf? It has a percentage. It does have caffeine. So you're but, that sensitive to but it. But I feel like I can drink a Coke or something, and it doesn't. It doesn't make me feel like this. So I don't know what's going on. I just feel like I need to go to sleep right now. Hmm. That's interesting because the Coke will add the weight. <laughs> I guess you drink Coke Zeros, but yeah. The decaf coffee should be healthier than the Coke, but. All right, you ready to rate this? Yeah. Three, two, one. Three stars, we agree. Uh, I think this looks great. I think the couple themselves look awesome. Potentially my only critique is the two, the bridesmaid and the groomsman right in the middle in yep. the back are probably too far away. And that one girl right in the middle I mean, you can't see you can't see them at all. The girl in the middle definitely drives me crazy. Who were the first two? The the two in the very far back? Yeah, like that that guy in the far the farthest guy away. He's like too far away, and he's right over the top of the girl. That's not ideal. Yeah, maybe you could bring could you bring the two bridesmaids closest to the camera, just like a foot closer, to help. Like, I don't know. They're in focus, but they feel just a, like a few feet too far behind. Yeah. I, what do you I think, think on the crop on this? Because the couple seems to sit in the frame in a really nice place. 
and you've shot wide to show the whole bridge. Is that just uh, a consequence of trying to frame it up this way, or do you think that works for the best? If you crop, if you crop in to get rid of the sky, do you still read this the same as a bridge, or do you like having that little bit of sky? I think I like, I like being able to see the whole top of the bridge. Um, and I have this great idea. You'll never guess what it is. But if the photographer got a little bit lower... And completely and blocked all the other people in the back. Up a little bit. Well, that's, that's my whole thing, is I don't want people directly behind them. I want, I want the wedding party to the sides. I think you might be able to get... More telephoto, lower, yeah. less sky, but have the blurry background. We know your style. We've seen it in our competitions. We know. Community, 2.53. What is, go back, what is that bouquet she has? Never seen anything like that. I think it's just got... Uh, like the bottom of her dress was sewn into the flowers? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, you know what I, video I've been thinking about making recently? I was talking last night when I... We did that. Your live ramblings? Yeah. Did you? Were you watching me talk? I did for a while. Okay. Cause I saw I was like, you Patrick's apologize for my dad. I saw that part. Yeah, I was, I was like, Patrick's probably watching. I was like talking a lot. I was trying to get your ESPN login because they have The Last Dance, the, the story of like the final, uh, I think it's the 97 Chicago Bulls, like the last time all, you know, Phil Jackson and oh, everybody. Oh, I heard about that. Michael Jordan and yeah. Dennis Rodman, they were all together. But... um. I don't know if you still have ESPN. I tried to hack your account because I know most of your passwords. Yeah. It wasn't letting me in. Well, there's a good chance that I bought it and then canceled mm -hmm. it after the last UFC. Well, you need to, to re-get that. Just okay. resubscribe. What was I talking about? You're talking about uh, a video idea that you had or a photo oh, shoot oh, idea yeah, that you yeah, had yeah, on yeah. the live video. Yeah, well, I know I, on the live video last night, which we deleted, and, like, you can't see it now. If you, if you missed it, that was your chance. But uh, I was just talking about I, I've wanted to make my own YouTube channel that's Stuff that I can just make videos about that aren't really necessarily photography related or might be but aren't really appropriate for after stoppers, whatever it might be. And one video that I've been thinking about making is just my view of weddings as a retired wedding photographer. Yeah. Because I have such a negative view of weddings. And I don't want to offend you and Kristen who are currently planning a wedding and prepared to waste huge sums of money for absolutely no reason at all. But try your best shot. Well, I don't have anything necessarily to say here, but it's just how silly everything is. I mean, you mentioned her bouquet and, like, what the heck is going on. But, you know, like, whatever that is is the current trend, and every girl has to have it, and, oh, that, that cost $3,000 to have everybody have that little doodad, and I'm going to make people jealous by posting on Instagram. And I just think it's all so stupid. Well, we were just talking to the florist, and the florist often does a lot of the decor and what was cool about one of the floors that we Skyped with was she was in her office. But, you know, you have all these ideas. I don't have any ideas, but a lot of girls have ideas of, like, I'm going to do stuff so different. I'm going to have a table like this with the wood. Yeah. But then the florist is like, I got five of those. Pick one. And she's got to act excited. But at the same time, you're like, oh, all those, like, glass things on the tables with the floating candles, like... She has those, and probably 25% of her couples do. The but eggs. I have an idea. What if instead of cups, we have mason jars? What if our straws have candy cane stripes on them? Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to impress so many people. All right. Let's move on. Are you going to have mason jars? No. No, no. We're going to have... Candy cane stripe straws? I don't know. I hope to not have any straws. I'm trying to go... Save the turtles? Stay, save the turtles. We did have a lot of images like this that were just kind of like, they felt like travel photos that you took of people. Um, that are nice, but I don't know the market for these. And we always approach these critiques as if you are a photographer trying to make money and you have a portfolio that's trying to cater to that. So maybe if you're some kind of travel photographer, this would work. But before we talk more about it, do you want to rate this? Yes. Three, two, one. Three? Yeah, I, I really like this. I mean, you know, I, I complained about the other family portrait where I felt like it was too posy. This feels so genuine to me. I love the girl with her tongue out. She looks great. Um, the lighting I like, but there is this blue cast In the highlights? that's reflecting off of their foreheads that feels... A little strange that, like, the girl with the tongue out doesn't really have, and maybe it's just a skin tone thing. 
Cool. You could go into Photoshop. Maybe you could do this in Lightroom and just go to the uh, the highlights and just pop a little bit of yellow in there. Mm. Or red, you know, the cyan if you... Yeah, but I don't know. I... I see what you're saying. I love, I will go as far as saying like the expression here is probably better than most of the expressions to this critique. Yeah. I'm just saying if you're a photographer trying to make money in a bigger market, you know, this just feels like I went on a mission trip and took a picture. We all have those pictures. Because of, because of the dirty clothes and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to, I don't know. I just feel like this wouldn't belong necessarily in a professional photographer's portfolio unless it was the section personal projects or travel or humanitarian something something like I just you're not going to have a, a normal paying client see this and be like that's what we want you know you may yeah. love that you're able to get people to react this way but if you've ever traveled the world and done mission trips I've, I've gone into really impoverished places and you pull out a camera you get this reaction a lot people are so excited to see you and they ham it up for the camera and in general like I love seeing pictures like this because it makes me remember how happy people can be with just bare necessities. You know, we've been talking about this in the coronavirus journals that we've been doing. Um, people like in America, they're so stressed and bummed out and depressed all the time. But you go to places where they have very little and you pull a camera out, the most simple thing, and people light up, you know. Yeah. You pull a camera out to most kids here in America, and they're like, no, I don't want my picture mm -hmm. taken. Yeah. So I like this picture, but I don't know that it belongs in any kind of portfolio that I can think of. Therefore, I gave it a two. Community, 2.73. It is shocking that fortune telling and tarot cards and all that stuff is still a thing in charleston you'll drive around and you'll see like little shops that have you know they're not necessarily nice buildings but i always wanted to have a commercial space for f-stoppers and i always felt like ah, i can't really justify the high rent you see the places like that with fortune not, telling not not in i'm not saying that the fortune teller's space would be good enough or big enough for f-stoppers but i'm just saying I've looked into how much commercial real estate is, and I always think to myself, like, oh, that's... I feel like every time I see Fortune Teller, it's like being run out of a house. It's like Asian massages or something. It's like... I've seen that massage as Massage well. and tarot card readings. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. That. It's just like, gosh, there's so many gullible people in the world. It's crazy. You ready to rate this? Yeah. Three, two, one. Really, just two? I don't I like. I don't like this image. I don't know that. I don't like the girl in the middle with the expression and the hand over her face. Um, I feel like all three of their expressions just don't go together, and I don't know how to articulate that. The girl on the left looks nice with her eyes closed, but I don't know that you would. You've made fun of me for picking out select images with eyes closed, and you're like, why would you pick the eye closed image? I just feel like. I don't Maybe if they were all looking at the ball and the girl in the middle, if she's the main character, was like persuading them and they were in the act of something. I don't know. I just, there's something that feels cheap about this. I don't know if it's the depth of field or all of the little doodads on the table. It just doesn't feel like, we've had some photographers on our channel where they will light this super moody to where you're not really seeing anything. It's all like impressions of stuff and it feels more mystical yeah and i feel like a really weird lighting like that moody lighting would be nice but you have beautiful women here so i see why you did the beauty lighting and you're showing them off but i don't know just something about it th seems kind of thrown together they're try maybe this is better they're trying to add all this character to this set but it feels contrived we you remember that one picture where it made no sense? We were like, we love this image, but why is there a skeleton over here and there's horns over here? I don't know if you remember the image I'm talking about, but it had so much. Well, I remember that person actually commented and said nothing was placed here. Like this is what this guy's room. But that's what like. I'm trying to say. This feels like you've tried to build a set, and for me, it doesn't feel like what you know. If you've ever been to New Orleans or something, and you happen to walk into one of these witchcraft stores or something like. They have so much character, and it makes you feel a certain way. This lacks that, but um, maybe everyone disagrees with me. Maybe I mean, I'm bringing my own bias. I don't know. I, I feel like we're, we're, 
I uh, maybe it's a little uh, confused. What's the goal here? Is the goal for this to be a fashion style shoot that has a theme of fortune telling, or is this supposed to be a fortune telling? Because like the stuff that everyone's wearing is is kind of ridiculous and over the top. Their expressions are ridiculous and over the top, but maybe that's the goal. But I get what you're saying. Community, two point eight one. You think one person owns all these dogs? I think these are two dogs. Oh. Huh. <laughs> I think you're right. I mean, maybe it could be three. I don't, I don't know. The, the darker dogs are harder to tell, but pretty sure the white dog is the same dog, just in three different poses. Are you ready? Three, two, one. I'm going four. Four? I think this is my favorite image. I mean, really? there's obviously funny business going on here. If you look at the bottom left by the sofa, you can see the depth of field go blurry very quickly. And then all of a sudden, it kind of comes back for those mountains that are really far away in the background. I also think that the uh, sky is fake as well. You I mean, everything tell. about this is fake, right? The Look at the highlight on the couch. You can tell that the way the fall off is on the back of the couch, it's not the kind of light you'd probably have from the sky. And I don't think this couch was ever in this environment. Like, I think and we, well, obviously, really? we obviously know the dogs have been placed there multiple times. I think this is a total Photoshopped image, which does not necessarily matter. Again, I just kind of think, like, where does this belong in your portfolio? Are you the, like, crazy, quirky Photoshop dog guy? And if so, maybe this is awesome and, like, everyone's going to hire you because, like, you can make anything a reality. But it's just, a, it's, like, so far out there. I'm not, it's, it's done well enough to where I gave it a three and I think this can belong in your portfolio, but it's also just like a little strange. I think three is probably the right answer. The reason why I gave it four was because I feel like this is unique and I feel like this is the type of thing that um, a family would see and go, I'm willing to pay for something like that. Maybe not necessarily this with copying the dogs on a couch or whatever, but I love the concepts this photographer's coming up with, it's different than every other portrait. What do portrait you think of like argument. couches in the middle of fields and stuff? That's another cliche that can go into my cliche video. Yeah, um, I like it because more work is... Required? Yeah, required to do it, you know? It's not just like, hey, redneck girl, come out to the train tracks and like, let's take snapshots. People are literally trucking around sofas, so... I don't feel like it's as cliche because it's more difficult to pull off. I don't know that I'm a huge fan of it. Like I've seen some high-end photo shoots, especially with album covers, where they'll take like a piano into a field and stuff. And I love that, you know? I love the whole November rain. Let's pull a church out in the middle of nowhere and shoot this crazy epic scene. I like this kind of couch and like a super rustic building that's got a lot of character. But when you take the couches in the middle of the fields. It just feels like a little cliche and strange to me. I don't know. It doesn't hit me the same way that like a piano in the middle of a crazy environment does. Maybe I'm, maybe You're it makes biased. no sense because it's just one object versus okay. another. But. Community 3.19. Ready? Yeah, three, two, one. This image, I don't know if I can say this image, but this shooting situation that you're in, 
has so much potential. Yeah, I know. I like the color grade. I love the tonings in this. I don't necessarily love the blown out window and like the the bricks. Like it could work. I don't like what a lot of the people are doing in here. Some seem like intrigued. Others seem bored. Others seem mean and mad. Like everyone's got just a different expression. I don't love the crop. There's a lot that I don't love with this, but I feel like you have amazing people here that could work in a really cool shoot. Yep. And maybe it's just picking one of them, like the boy looking at us and making him the star and just playing with the environment and the sets and the, the posing, I don't want to say a little bit more, maybe a lot more, but there's a, I just feel like all of the, the ingredients to making a really cool photograph are here. I'm just not completely sold on the way that it was executed. I agree. I want to love this. I really do. But when I just think if I went to someone's website and this was the first image I saw, I would not think they were a professional. I would think they were an amateur photographer. So for that reason, I got to give it two. Community, 3.17. Do you think this is a real office? Like, <laughs> I don't know if you watch all the Curb Your Enthusiasms, but on one of the episodes, Larry David keeps going to this restaurant, and he starts to have this idea that, like, they seat the beautiful people over here, episode, yeah. and then the non-beautiful people over there, and the guy's like, no, that's ridiculous. Why would we ever do that? We have your seat ready over here. And so he keeps going to the restaurant with different types of people to figure out, like, if he'll ever get seated, if it's his friends bringing him down, or if he's the ugly person. I look at this image, and I'm just like, man... Every person in here looks highly attractive. Yeah. And I'm like, man, are there really offices like that? <laughs> All right, you ready to read it? I think so. Three, two, one. Three stars. Um, I think my biggest critique with this is I don't like that much space on the bottom of the frame. I love the fact that they've got those cool shadows being cast towards the camera but I don't need that much. I just want to crop off a little bit of the bottom. So that brings up an interesting point. Would you crop off the bottom and create an image that's so wide and hard to use as an asset to make the composition better? Or is there something you would have done differently from the very get-go to try to balance out? Would you turn the tables so that some people are coming towards the camera and make it less align? Or would you try to... Well, first of all, it seems like they've done a lot of work to get the, the lighting and the posing down here, but they didn't center everyone up. To that beam? Yeah. Which The is... whole camera should be moved like a foot or two to the right. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I feel like they should be moved to the right. And the camera, the camera looks like it's in the center. Okay, if you look at the two columns, they yeah. both have the same angle. But the guy in the middle is kind of under one side. Yeah, um, but I really, really dig this. I mean, super cool. Like you said, everybody looks super attractive. So I don't know if you cast this or not, but everybody looks great. And everybody's outfit looks so good, too. I wonder, for the sake of trying to make an image more balanced that's not so wide and harder to read everybody and... You're left with this ultra wide angle crop and everything. I wonder if, you know, you cut half the people out and you just pick the best, you know? Or you do a couple different scenes, you know? Maybe one you have it like more ethnically diverse. Maybe the other one you have your main players if this is like the, the, the most valuable people in your team. But you just do it to where like you say the same story with like eight people. There's like 13 or 14 people here. You just cut the number down a little bit, you know? And then you could crop in a little bit more because you don't have to show as many people. But there's you, 12. Like there's, there's 12? 12 for 12 disciples. So it's... it's. You think that's what it's supposed to be? I mean, there is this Jesus element to it. 
The guy what in the you middle. That you didn't get that this was like the Last Supper reenactment? No. I didn't read that at all. I what? mean, I did, I did read that like <laughs> he's a savior spiritual type of guy, but my mind didn't go to the Last Supper. How did it not go to that? I don't know. I just felt like this is like uh, chaos at a... I mean, let's say it was 11 people or 13 people. The number wasn't 12. Would your mind still have gone there? Yeah. I just, I just view it as a huge group gathering of everyone in this office. All right. You're pretty dumb. All right. Community 2.99. We have um, talked to some guys who are into security that look like this. Yeah. And we keep toying with an idea of, like, how can we do a photo shoot they with actually them? look much better than this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Do they have that? I mean, look at some of these guns. Oh, I don't know about the guns. I'm just saying, like, them as models. And, uh, well, it's kind of hard. These guys are in full camo with their faces. I mean, to be honest, it's kind of hard to see who they are. But All right. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Two stars, we agree. Um, you know, love the concept, but lighting's not very good. You, you, you did all this work to get the uh, helicopter out there. You can't even see it. Too contrasty. Um, got some weird white balance discrepancies going on. Uh, guys look decent. Good, good uh, outfits and everything, but other than that, don't love it. Yeah, I have nothing really to add to it. Well, then we should move on. Community gives this one 2.6. Is it bad when you get your image in a critique and then <laughs> half the critiquers are like, I don't even have anything to say. Yeah, you're so an asshole. Sorry about that. That crazy dating show I was telling you on Netflix where like they invite the most attractive people to an island and then tell them they can't have sex with each other. <laughs> they, all these shows, they all do these things where they have the set built and they interview people, right? And the camera's moving and like there's really good production. Mm. So many people are using these Quasinar type lights where they have them all over the place and you'll see it, you know, MTV Music Awards. It's just such a cool thing that's come out in the last couple of years. Weren't we supposed to be sent a bunch of those? Like a year ago, and they never came. I don't know. Matt but Group said they were sending us these, and then never should did. look into them. The ones that are colored are pretty cool. You, I mean, I think you want a lot of them. Like all of these shows that I'm seeing, I mean, they may have 20 in the background, hmm. and you have them hanging, or you have them all moving slightly in the depth of field, or you're shooting past them. It's pretty cool, but. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. So between a two and a three, I feel like this has the potential to be a four or five. But uh, I love the lighting. I I love the location, but it just feels kind of like you've taken pictures with your buddies, and this is kind of a joke picture. But you put professional models in there doing something interesting, and you bring it all together with some theme. This could be amazing. I read this as a photographer, and I view this as like maybe an ad for a production company, but it just feels like photographers, right? It feels like you got the lights and you're trying to do a test shoot with them and you've smoked out the room and it just feels like a test shot to me. I wanna see like if this is truly your production team, I wanna see maybe this orange light propped up on its own somehow, like in the background, but maybe all four people much closer to the camera and lit with a cool way, but it's more of a portrait of the four guys standing in the scene. The way this reads, it just kind of feels like people working on, like, compositing four people into a scene, and I don't know, it just doesn't feel like the highest-end photography. Nobody's making the right expression. None of it really makes sense. It doesn't feel like they're working on a project. It, this guy's casually drinking coffee, and the other guy's, like, filming the process. Like, it just... None of it makes sense. None of it really makes sense, but the scene itself is pretty cool. Yeah. Love the white balance differences in the smoke and stuff it's really cool community 2.91 we aren't really keeping track but it feels like more people are disagreeing with my rating by one star i'm being harsher than the community which usually isn't the case yeah from the look of everyone's face i'm gonna guess that this is an over the hill 
birthday party. And all of them are turning 40 at once, and they're all like, ah. Oh. Is it 40 or 50? How, what age do what you... What are you talking about? First of all, none of these people look like they're 40 or 50 No, but they got old. the black balloons, and everyone looks miserable. That's all I'm trying to say. I don't think they're supposed to look miserable. It's supposed to look cool. Cool? Well, if I stumbled into this party, and that's the look I got, I would turn right around and leave. Well, that's what fashion photography is all about, Patrick. I don't know. Usually when I see a fashion image, if I had that look from the models, I'd probably enter into the scene a little bit more. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. I'm in between a two and a three. I feel like uh, I, I like the location. I like everyone's outfits. I like the pose. I'm not that big of a, I don't have that big of a problem with their mean look. I mean, that's kind of a fashion thing. I think my biggest complaint is the lighting. It feels like we kind of have cross lighting, like lighting from both the left and the right. And, uh, I do not like that. I, I'd rather have lighting from one side with a little bit of fill, and I feel like this this could look super professional, but right now it kind of has a direct flash feel to it. I mean, you can see the lights and the balloons. It's octobox right, softbox left. I do not like 45, 45 degree lighting. Something about this image, and I don't know if it's just because there's so many people in this frame, but it's this feels super posy to me. Like, no one looks like they're in kind of a natural environment. And if you compare that to the highest rated image, which is 19 images back, I can't get to it. All those women, they, they were posed as well, but they felt it was more grand, and they felt like they fit into the scene better. This just feels like everyone's so posy. I mean, this one girl's posed down by the middle guy's crotch, and this other girl's, like, got legs on the bar scene. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to that. You're it just doesn't. Hater, Patrick. I'm being a little bit of a hater, but I don't know that. Community 2.87 and the final image. You are the winner of a free tutorial at fstoppers.com slash store. You can send me a private message on fstoppers and I'll send it to you. Did you say any of this for the first image? You did a horrible job no. introducing this I video. just figured people know the routine. The first image also won a free tutorial. Send me a private message on fstoppers.com and let me know which tutorial you want and I will send it to you. Are you ready? I think so. Three, two, one. Three stars, we agree. There's aspects of this I really like. I love that this feels like it was taken in the studio, but they have that airy, cloudy background. It feels cool to me. I, and I feel like these girls are beautiful, but something about their expressions are a little weird. Like the one on the left looks a little surprised or something, and then the next one looks a little angry, and then the next one feels a little like trying to be sexy and the one on the right I don't know I don't know it's like everybody's just doing something a little different it doesn't feel like it's flowing together to me I agree I'm having a really hard time figuring out what like seems very picky but I almost want the girl on the left left shoulder to pull in a little bit more so that she feels more part of the group and then the white girl's hair just feels kind of like thin and sloppy. I would just Photoshop her hair to make it thicker. I don't, I mean, these are such nitpicky things. I don't know if that would fix the overall vibe. I mean, I think it's cool, but there's something you kind of hinted on. It's like the cohesion between everybody just feels off. Like their makeup is kind of over the top, but it doesn't feel like it was like, the darker skinned girl's makeup kind of makes sense, but then the girl in the middle seems to have less makeup. Like she also should have some kind of tribal thing maybe. I don't know, I can't figure out why it doesn't feel as concise and, and cohesive as I want it to be, but I do like the, the subtle sky background. Well, the community gives it 2.95, so they agree with us on that one. Did What did you give this? You gave it a three. Okay. So we agree.
Thank you for watching, guys. If you'd like to be a part of the next critique, we're doing technology. Technology. I think we've done that one before. Have we? Oh, whatever. Um, you can go to fstoppers.com slash contests at any time to see previous critiques and upcoming critiques and what you can submit your images to. We will see you next time.